Pulling in here to the base station, I guess they call it. You can see there's some cloud cover. I don't know what the elevation is that we're at right now, but the peak of Mount Washington runs uh, middle 6,000s or so, which isn't really high compared to some of the places out west and what have you, but um, this is uh, right. this is quite a peak here for, for our part of the country. You go on the choo-choo train, buddy? All right, so they have a couple of different varieties of trains. They have wood wood fired steam powered trains and they also have newer diesel trains. I think they're only running diesel trains on the weekends, so that's what we're going to be riding up on. Well, hopefully you'll be able to see on the video here the track as it ascends the mountain. It's uh, quite interesting and you can see how old it is just by the artifacts all around us here. I'm sure it's been modernized and updated over the years. There's one of the early trains right there, or engines. Some of you did, you took your tickets, but I'm gonna be a brakeman now. My name is Fred. All right, it looks like our base station elevation is 2,700 feet. And that there is what the track looks like. Once we get moving, because we are, are going to be traveling in a blister at five miles an hour. <laughs> oh yeah, so hold on tight everybody. Alright, the brakeman just told us some interesting facts which I missed on the video camera. Sorry guys. This engine is powered by a 600 horsepower John Deere Marine Diesel. And evidently they use a marine diesel because of the steep grade and something to do with, I don't know, you you guys that know more about this stuff than I do will, tell, will be able to tell me why they use a marine diesel. But uh, that's kind of cool. This little river that we're crossing right now, it's called the Yamanusik River. Now these bright pink flowers you can see here and there out beside the tracks, those are called fireweed. I call that because my Native Americans used to use those plants to make a bird remedy. And they're also called that because they grow in areas that are very open. Now the purple ones, they're called lupins. Now pepper sass is actually sitting on a floor down in the parking lot of plates at the bottom of the Cobb Railway. Just take a look at these trees out here on both sides of the tracks. Now, if those trees look like they're growing crooked, they're actually not. They're actually growing straight up and down. You didn't hear that when I said that before, huh? What's that? But you guys can all take turns coming up here doing that? Yeah, my wife didn't hear that. Oh. So she's like, you can't get up there. I go, well, you just said it good, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And before we had that switch, we used to have an old nine-piece hand switch. And each of those pieces had to be... Oh. And that water tank is exactly level, too. So what do you think, Luke? Do you remember coming on this when you were a little kid? You don't? Well, I remember it, and I can remember that you were terrified. Are you terrified now? It's pretty cool though, isn't it? Alright, we're going into the clouds, it looks like, huh? Very cool. Now, how much further along is the tree line? That's at 5,000 feet, so I'm going to say it's probably about half a mile from here. Wow. Do have solar panels. Do you like the choo-choo train, buddy? Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. So all the switching is operated by hydraulic pumps that are operated on a bank of batteries that are charged solarly. This is very interesting. Apart from the diesel motors, this entire operation is totally sustainable. The steam engines are powered by water, and I was mistaken earlier, it's not wood, it's coal fire. Over here on the left hand side of us next to the tracks, that probably does look a lot like a road, or maybe a hiking trail. But what that actually is, is where they buried a power cable going up to the summit of the mountain. 
Now, the reason that they did that is because the generating station on the summit caught fire one night, burned completely down, and it destroyed everything inside of it. Look at it. Saying hi to the bears. From the clouds. But if you look at our reflection when we goodbye, if you can believe it, that house is level. The grade is 37 and a half degrees. We're at 37 and a half degrees of grade here. And look at Luke standing. Wow. That is cool. Oh man. This is gorgeous. Is this your first trip? So where is this taking us? Into the into nowhere? Look at it. I love it. That is gorgeous. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. As long as you make sure that you have the clothing here, that's right. They're good to go. That's right. That's the whole nope. secret. Looks like some hikers are over here, and right behind those hikers, there is a ravine that drops 3,000 feet. I don't know if you can see it on the camera here on the video, but the clouds are literally blowing through the train car. Very neat. It's gotten very cold up here as well. It's probably in, I would say, the low 50s, upper 40s. Here's the coach that we rode in. We're at the peak of Mount Washington right now. And it is cold, windy, and cloudy. That's the engine, the diesel engine that brought us up here. It only drinks 22 gallons per round trip. Pretty impressive. I guess it's a biodiesel. These guys are all over this stuff. Got some pretty cool technology. What I meant to say earlier is there's a spring that feeds a 5,000 gallon cistern that provides water to fill the, uh, the steam-powered engines. Very impressive. This is called officially, I guess, Mount Washington State Park. All right, well, we are now back at the museum, and I've had an opportunity to speak with all of the engineering people, and I gotta tell you, this is the most impressive operation. They manufacture all of their own engines. They have a small machine shop with a welder and you know, some other manufacturing resources, and they do everything the old-fashioned way, and they manufacture the engines. Essentially, John Deere comes in, delivers an engine, they uncrate it, and they build all of the systems around it. It's absolutely brilliant. And this is just a, a testament to human ingenuity, and um, perseverance. Take a quick walk through. Oh, got our little engineer here. Are you driving the train, buddy? Choo choo! Well guys, I want to thank you for joining us on this video here. And I especially want to thank my neighbor and friend Bobby who so graciously gave us these tickets. He actually runs this entire operation here. And uh, it, what a special, special time and our kids really enjoyed it. And I'd say I enjoyed it the most. And um, if you like this video, I'd appreciate you giving us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, we'd appreciate your joining us for the ride. It's kind of a different video, and we hope to be able to um, provide you with some pretty cool new stuff in the upcoming days and weeks. Have a good one. Thanks.